second citizen science lecture in our fall series. Um, my name is Ramya Sundaram. I'm the citizen science coordinator for the Key Biscayne Community Foundation. Um, today we have Lindsay Elam speaking about the invasive lionfish problem. Uh, she has a, a bachelor's degree in marine biology and she is a current graduate student at University of Miami um, at the uh, Rosenstiel School. Uh, currently she is an intern with Biscayne National Park and she works with their, or specifically in their lionfish eradication program. And I will let her tell you more about that. All right, thank you for the introduction. Um, all right, hi everybody. Hi. 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 Uh, so as she said, I am here to talk about lionfish. So they are a big problem here. Biscayne National Park, just to start off a little background, is actually one of four of our national parks here in South Florida. The other is Big Cypress, Everglades, and Dry Tortugas. Uh, so Biscayne, just 174,000 acres, and 95% of that is actually water. So that's a lot of space for those lionfish to invade. Um, it's our largest marine park in the National Park Service. And it's also home to over 500 species of fish, mammals, invertebrates, reptiles, and endangered species. Uh, they aim to preserve and protect for the education, inspiration, recreation, and enjoyment of present and future generations a rare combination of terrestrial marine and amphibious life in a tropic setting of great natural beauty. And the lionfish are unfortunately trying to hurt that. So a little background on lionfish. So they are originally from the Indo-Pacific, so they're not from here. Um, and they first came here about 1985, and they've become one of the most destructive invasive species in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, they've successfully invaded the Caribbean, Western Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico as of now. Um, so their native range is actually in the Indo-Pacific, as I said. All in the red here is where they're native to. So they're native to the warm tropical water of the South Pacific, um, Indian Oceans, and the Red Sea. So all in the red here. Okay, now I have a question for you guys. Do you guys know what an invasive species is? Yes. No. Can anybody answer? Yes. Like yeah, do you know, does it cause harm or anything? Harm, okay. So yeah, invasive species, non-native, they're alien. Yes, they cause harm, and likely it's for <laughs> economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Now, how did lionfish get here? Well, like I said, they came in 1985, uh, probably due to an aquarium release. Uh, somebody didn't want their pet anymore, most likely. It's not actually really known. Um, Hurricane Andrew then happened in 1992, and it's thought that more lionfish were knocked into the water, and that's what started the lionfish invasion. Other ways invasive species can get here is from ballast water. So when, sh when the big ships go into port, they, put, uh, they take in all the water from there to balance the ship for their long travel. Um, they, all the water that they take in there includes species, so it's just right there in the port, and then they dump it wherever they're going. So whatever they bring in there, they dump more species over there. The invasion is not just in Florida. It's all through the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, ocean currents like the Gulf Stream are the ones that are actually taking the larva of the lionfish th up throughout, all around. And they can be seen as far north as Rhode Island, as far east as Bermuda, and in Cape Hatteras. They go there during the summer months that they cannot survive in the winter months because it's too cold. They have a thermal tolerance of about like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. <coughs> so past that, it's too cold for them to survive. This is just a little map that starts from 1992. It goes till about it goes till 2010, just showing the distribution of lionfish, and you can see they just explode. Oh my god! Cool! Oh my god! Cool! Watch it one more time. 2015. Let you guys watch one more time, and then we'll go to him. So. From about 2000, you can see that they've just exploded up the East Coast and then all throughout the Caribbean. And they started going into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, from 2010 till 2015, they have, complete, they have successfully invaded the Western Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. You can just see just in five years how much they've 
ex expanded into the Gulf of Mexico. One in there, and all in here. Can I have a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. All those, uh, that turf was the rest of the coast. That where they have the natural, they go out and the people work. Uh, this is so super, like very zoomed out there. They can be found along the coast. Mostly lionfish are found in deep water. So they can be up to waters in like 300 meters where we can't even go. Um, they, I've seen them coast to shore also, but they're very small generally. So the bigger, the deeper they are, generally the bigger they are. Uh, and that's why it's so, that's also a reason why it's hard to eradicate them because they're just at places we can't go. Did I answer your question? When you say they, we can't go, are they deep in? Yeah, they're just they, very, they very deep. Mm -hmm. okay. And what are the numbers you're talking about? I see the distribution, but are we talking millions? Are we talking thousands? What are we talking about? I don't think it's actually known just because they're so deep and they, in a, when a minute I'll talk about this, they just reproduce so fast. So, but probably not. Yeah. Are you going to get rid of them? Uh, I will talk to you about how we're trying to help eradicate them um, in a little bit, but it's actually thought to be not possible because they're so invasive here. It's like sex, 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 okay, whatever. Successful, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, all of the red dots are right next to land. Mm -hmm. And so I think that presumably you're talking about sightings there, but yeah, if, these are if sightings. they are deep, they'd be all over the place. Right, right. So these are sightings. They're, I'm sure there's a lot more out there that we don't know about. So now for the water intake of the ships, do people do that with species? I'm sure that they've implemented some new things, uh, but I'm not 100% sure because I'm not really up to date with the shipping rules and stuff. Ballast water? Um, I know way more about ballast water than anybody should, really. Um, they, uh, we have some fairly strict regulations for ballast water, federal re regulations in the U.S., um, and it, it's really convoluted and complicated. Um, so they have the ballast water can't transfer anything um, bigger than um, maybe like larva. So you, you won't actually pick up, I mean, it might pick up fish, but they treat ballast water when they go from port to port to kill off anything large. And then they have to test it usually to see if it's like one part per 10,000 of like certain types of like E. coli or bacteria or larva or whatever it is. And, and it depends on what it is they're looking for. There, there's different numbers. Um, so, so that's the, the federal regulations and they're, they're, you know, they have their specific numbers. But then each port a lot of times will have their own regulations. And so some ports might have more strict regulation. They have to go at least by the federal. But then they, some ports might have even stricter regulations, so they're like, well, you, still, you can't let your ballast water go here unless you meet our guides, guidelines. Um, and then places like Hawaii, I think, has extremely strict um, regulations because they don't want anything to come in there and mess up their habitat. The problem is that even with these regulations, you still have small amounts that will get out. So if you pick up lionfish eggs or larvae, like assuming that they've been already fertilized, and you, you pick those up, you can kill off you know, 10,000 of them, but then you still have one. And suppose you pick up 78 million of them, and then you still have 78,000. You know, like that's still quite a lot that you're, you're then letting go. So even with the regulations, there's still a chance of transferring uh, different things from one place to another. If they don't like cold, why do they go so deep? It can get cold, but we don't know exactly how deep they can go, but we just know that they can go pretty deep. One more question and I'll continue on. Question. How do they want to invade us? Why? Well, they, they were introduced here. They don't know. They just are trying to survive. So, yeah. they didn't you want know. to. People they didn't, brought them yeah. here. <laughs> they weren't trying. They were dumb. Yeah, so they're just like, oh, a new home, okay. Let me survive here. <laughs> All right, now I'll talk about how they're so successful. So, like I said, their growth rate and their reproductive rates are, they just have really good success. So they can re uh, reproduce year round. Uh, unlike, this is different than other fish, such as groupers, where groupers can reproduce about three months out of the year. So, they just continually reproduce. It's actually also thought that lionfish can reproduce every four days, 
Not sure if they do that, but they can. <laughs> yes, that's a lot. Uh, and one individual uh, lionfish can produce about two million eggs per year. Do they reach reproductive age early? They do. So they re they reach a reproductive age about one year in. Most other fish is like three to five years. Yeah. What's their native predator in their, in their natural habitat? Uh, <coughs> there's a, a range of things. Um, we didn't really know too much about the lionfish until they, they invaded here, so they're still learning about their native range, but I've read papers about sharks, um, some groupers, cornet fish. Uh, I can't think about seven. Those those three definitely I've read. Oh, and eels, like moray eels. But here they don't know what to do with them, so uh, they lack natural predators here. So this it's the spines, like the predators. They didn't evolve here, so all the other pre predators here are like, what is this? And they've been. I've seen personally. I saw a. I think it was a spotted eel trying to like nip at one of the lionfish that we caught so they it seems like they might be interested but they just don't know what to do with them because they're new they're relatively new um, they're also relatively resistant to parasites so they can't get diseased very easily here uh, very quickly and then also they're found really deep okay so they're, they're not just the new ones, they are actually hurting our reefs. So as it says here, they just eat and eat and eat. Uh, they are generalist predators. They will just eat whatever they can fit into their mouths. So if it fits in their mouths, they're gonna eat it. Uh, a study show, uh, showed that a lionfish was capable of reducing 80% of reef fish in just five weeks. Because they can expand their stomachs about 30 times the size. Their stomachs are also acidic, so they can uh, break down their food really quickly. So either, I think that here they do that so they can just continuously eat because there's just so much prey for them around. 30 times their size, they could go up to 12 weeks without eating if there's no food source. Uh, I think that's more in their native range because here they lack natural predators to keep them in check and then also, prey do not know what to do with them, and they are easily confused. So they have slow movements when they're trying to get their prey. They have these pectoral fins. They're fan-like, uh, and all of their whole body just looks. You guys seen a picture? They look very yeah. spiny and beautiful fish. They kind of resemble seaweed or tube worms. So this is to confuse their prey. So their prey thinks that they're harmless seaweed. Oh, maybe I'll like hang out with it or eat it or something. So this lures the prey in, but unsuspecting prey are like, oh, never mind, that's fish. So what they do is they use slow movements. Yeah, oops. Slow movement, they use their pectoral fins to uh, push them and corral them into a corner, and then they open their mouths and suck the fish in. Do they act the same? I know they're a popular aquarium fish. Do they act the same? Appetite in the aquarium, or is there something about being in captivity that keeps them in shape? That is a good question, and I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, I could find out and then email you it yeah, later. Yeah. Um, I've kept them, they eat the same, they're very voracious. Yeah, I, I would assume so. Yeah, if they... So, how does this affect the marine habitats here? Well, I'll just say it in two ways directly and indirectly. Directly, they just eat a significant amount of fish and other things. Uh, like, as I said, generalist predator, they'll eat carnivores, omnivores, herbivores. They'll also eat octopi, uh, so other invertebrates. They found that in a study that there was recruitment declined by 90% as a, line, uh, as a result of lionfish being on the reef. And recruitment is when juveniles uh, go into adults. So it, they reduced that by 90%. So not those juveniles could not survive into adulthood because they're eaten. They de decrease biodiversity. As I said, they eat whatever they can fit in their mouths, so they're not picky. They will eat any kind of fish. Uh, they also eat invertebrates, octopi, lobsters, crabs, shrimps, all sorts of things. 
this is mostly done by it, with trophic cascades, which is when you kind of add or remove something from the food web or their, that food chain, and it affects the other groups. So, for instance, with the lionfish, before the lionfish were here, there were herbivore fish such as parrotfish. The parrotfish were eating all the algae and keeping it in check, not all of it, but like keeping the algae in check so it doesn't overgrow on the corals. Now, and so the lionfish, the lionfish eat most of the parrotfish. So now the parrotfish are a lot smaller, leaving the al algae to overgrow as much as they want on the corals. So this degrades the reef, uh, making it so fit other fish like don't want to be there that, to go find new habitat to live in that is more suited for them. And this also smothers corals. Essentially, it makes it so the corals cannot photosynthesize so they cannot survive. And then all of this works together synergistically with other threats, such as climate change, pollution, overfishing. Uh, it all degrades the reef and all working it together. How does this affect the ecosystem? <coughs> so as I just said with um, the trophic cascades, from that you can get a phase shift where the example I just told you where if we take out if some, most of the herbivores, herbivores <coughs> the algae gets overgrown and undertaken. So before, we have a reef like this, algae's kept in check, there's lots of fish around, it's great. Now we add lionfish, which eats most of these fish in the herbivores and whatnot. And then the algae is able to just be overgrown. So now we have a habitat that was coral dominated and now it's al algal dominated. Uh, and then, like I said, this is called um, a phase shift. So it just shifts the ecosystem to a different state. And when fish, as you can see, there's not a lot of fish in this picture, that's because they're out looking for a new habitat that's more like this. So Biscayne actually <coughs> created a uh, lionfish management plan is shortly after the problem started. It was implemented in 2009 and the first sighting of lionfish in the park was actually in June 2009, so they were very on top of it to like try and keep them at bay. Uh, just a fun fact, since September this year, the park staff has removed 6,210 lionfish. <coughs> but there's also probably a lot more with recreational users going out and removing lionfish. So other things that like we actually go out and do, so we're doing continuous lionfish control and suppression. So as I said, they're probably, it's, eradication is probably not likely, but we, we can control them by continuously going out, diving, removing the lionfish uh, from their habitats and trying to you know, remove them so they don't keep re reproducing every four days. They have to be feared? Are they difficult to catch? Um, they're actually not that difficult to catch. We survey the habitat so we, to check to see if lionfish are there. We remove them. Uh, also looking to see how the reef is doing while we're doing it. And we use tools such as pole spear to remove the lionfish. And then we also dissect them and study them. So we can do many things with dissecting them. We can measure them. We can measure them. We can get their gut content. We can sex them, we can weigh them, it just depends on what we want to know. If you only catch like five, it won't be much of a difference. But if those five were in the water still, they can still continuously reproduce. And remember, one fish can reproduce, can produce about two million eggs a year. So that's a lot already, right there, <laughs> with five. Um, are you trying to just kill all of them or like move them somewhere else? We're just trying to remove them. I don't. I don't know if we can move them. So over. Move them There's a lot. So do you kill We're them or you catch them? Species? Yes, we, we can. We either do. We either kill them or catch them. It just depends on what we're doing. Mostly, we just kill them uh, and remove them from the population, and then we dissect them and study them. For and the ones we catch, what do you catch? The ones we catch, uh, it goes into research, and if they're fillable, we'll eat them. So they are really good. They're delicious. <laughs> Uh, these are just some pictures. Uh, this is just like a catch, one catch from one dive. Uh, on, I 
forgot to take a picture, but we got like 18 fish on one dive on Tuesday. Oh, that was great. And today, actually, we got 12. Where were you diving? Today, we were a little bit south of, of uh, Gawi Light, Lighthouse. Uh, and then this is just an example of us going out and surveying line fish and then shortly get done. A couple of years ago, with Bimini, they were having such a problem and they did some kind of content. Reef, um, the organization, they sponsor our derbies all the time. And you can go out, depending on where the derby is, just go out in that area and go, and you're more than welcome to go into the park so and get them. them here, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's actually one that I helped out with called the Woody Foundation. They sponsored one, and that was in, uh, people went out into the park and outside the park, but all over there. No, I don't know if Biscayne has ever done one. I've only been with them since June, but I don't think so. I know that they've done an in-house derby, so it was kind of like two teams split up and go. Some some restaurants do. Uh, Reef.org will li list the restaurants that serve lionfish. There's 19 in Florida. <coughs> um, but go to your restaurants and ask them to serve lionfish. We like they're delicious. People want them. And Whole Foods sells them. Yes, and Whole Foods now sells them. Really? Yes. Oh, are, they, are they local yeah. or are they? Yeah. They, no. they're, I'm pretty sure they're local. Yeah, that's the issue is that there's all there's there's toxicity in them, so that I think there's poison. There's actually I will get to that in a in a little bit, but they're actually get nervous about. They're actually safe to eat. So just to um, talk about what how we catch the lionfish at the park. So lionfish are slow moving. They don't have natural predators here, so they don't really fear us. They can get really, we can get really, really, really close to them, um, and then shoot them. So we use <laughs> we use pole spears, such like uh, like this, where it has three prongs. And usually, when you find them in stores, they have three barbs on the inside to keep the fish hooked on. Uh, we remove those just because we use uh, bags, mesh bags. I don't have one with me, but we use mesh bags instead just for ease for us. Um, so this is how you use it. So you want to put your thumb like this and you go as far as you can up to the top here. I'm not going to release this because I don't want to like, hurt anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> um, you point as close as you can to the fish, get there, get there, and then you release it and then you want to catch the fish. Sorry, I can try and do this in the air for you guys. Um, you want to get as close as you can and then release, but without this other arm here, obviously. <laughs> and then try and catch the spear again. So when, once that fish is on the spear, you don't want to let go because it might swim off. They've done that. And it's annoying. But um, once you get them. And how do they get off the spear? <laughs> uh, you can do... This is one of the most safest ways. It's called a zookeeper. So the fish goes in, in this way, and then as you can see, there's like this indent here. You pull the fish, or you pull the spear out, and the fish stays in, and it, there's no risk of getting it spined because the spines are they're all locked away in there. How much do those run? Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. About thirty bucks. Are they thirty bucks? Okay. Around thirty dollars. <laughs> Full spear is about 15. Any other? <laughs> no. Well, if you want to catch them live anyway, uh, this is what you use kind of like two little nets to catch them. Uh, we have a couple in the visitor center, so that's why we have these to go and catch live ones. The biggest thing is to be careful because they're spiny. And you want a big one. How, how do you catch them at 300 feet? No. Oh, you're gonna have special dive like equipment. I don't even know. Can't catch them by line. No, you can't. They don't. They don't respond to it. They, so lionfish are. Lionfish like to be in like crevices and wrecks and just anywhere that they can like get underneath and. Whatever. So I don't. They don't really respond to them in line. The best way, the best method is actually pole spear, to remove them that has been found this far. There are people trying to try and trap them. I actually am doing a project on that for my uh, my master's degree. Not working, but uh, it's, just, it's just really hard. But I've also talked to another person that's trying to engineer uh, something for the top of lobster trap to open and close the door for lionfish. Like it senses the lionfish. 
I don't really fully understand it because he's a computer engineer. Scan but, scanners. But yeah. Okay. So <coughs> just things that you need if you want to go out and try and catch lionfish. fish. You can get the aquarium nets, larger nets, like that one over there. Um, pole spears like I showed you. Definitely wear gloves. If you have these handy dandy uh, needle, they're they're puncture proof gloves. So they help at least on the underside of your hand. I don't know if I can put uh, just under here for when you handle the lionfish. So it's really good for handling them. Do you need a fishing license? No, you don't, you don't need a fishing license at all. Um, there's no fishing license. There's no catch limit. There's no size limit. You just get as many as you want. As many as you can. Get them. They do, they do have some gear restrictions sometimes because they don't yeah. want you to take gear where you can catch other fish that you're not supposed to be fishing. That's so so they, they do have some gear restrictions when you're going specifically for lionfish. You have to get lionfish specific gear. <clears throat> but that's it. Everything else, is, you know, you can do whatever you want. But I think this year it was if you got 50 lionfish by whatever time frame, the time frame, you got an extra, uh, you got a coin to give you get you an extra lobster um, for the mini season. For the mini season. Yeah. For the mini season. Yeah. No, 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 no. So when I, I'll get to that shortly still. Um, the venom is only, it's injected, so you have to, they don't shoot out, you actually have to like get hit by the lionfish or scraped by it, depending on how severe it is. Um, I have been envenomated, but it wasn't that bad, luckily for me. I, it like just hit right on my knuckle, just swelled it a little bit. But it does hurt, and there's, the only real thing is to put it in hot water, which I'll also talk about in a bit. Yeah. How poisonous is it? Uh, it's, that's hard to explain. Um, uh, I mean, it, it varies. It just depends on the person. So, like, some people that for that are, like, allergic to bees or wasps or stuff like that might be more prone to being allergic to the venom in the lionfish. It just depends. So, just monitor it if you get stung. If you need to seek medical attention, seek it right away. Don't wait, because it can cause a lot of discomfort. All right, so how do we identify a lionfish? Now I'm gonna also bring out a lionfish. Does anybody not want me to take out a lionfish to show you? It's dead. I'm gonna take out a lionfish to show you guys. Does anybody not want to see that? It's a dead lionfish. It's a dead lionfish that I caught today. Hey, I wanna see it. She's going to lift it up. Um, if I can just have all of your attention real quick. We're running a little bit behind schedule, so we, if we could just hold questions until the end, that would be really helpful. Yeah. Okay, so this is a lionfish. If you guys have never seen one in person, now you have. Um, so you see the colorations, uh, it's basically a warning sign for predators or prey or anything really. Um, the red, the white, and the black bands, kind of hard to tell because they kind of look orange here, but it's an orangey red. So that's kind of like a warning. It's also, um, like I said, it also looks like seaweed. Let me try and... Yeah. 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 Like this. Okay. So now, there are a couple of things they have to try and lure predators, or even prey, excuse me. Uh, they have these fleshy things under their mouths. They kind of resemble seaweed and above their eyes. Sometimes they're not there because prey gets them and they eat them. But then, fish probably eat them after. <laughs> uh, all right, so then, now, they're, as we talked about, they are venomous, so they have 18 venomous spines. So 13 of them are up here. They're very easy to spot. They're the first 13 here. This is the spine. Wow. All the way down. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. 
This is the spine. This is the venomous spine. So this, if you get hit by one of these, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the toxin into you. That's how. So there's. So as I said, there's 18. So 13 are just on the top. Now, when handling live fish, people forget there are smaller ones that people don't you don't see normally. There's two on the pectoral fins down here. I mean, yeah. So they're one on each. So there's. They're really small. So this is the first one right here, <coughs> if you guys can see. And I'll have the fish later, so if you guys want to come look at it after yeah. as well. Um, and then there's three on the anal fin, which is the first three right here. So when you handle a lionfish, you have to be very, very careful, especially when on the underside. The easiest and safest way is to hold it through its mouth. Oh, yeah. Or... Sometimes I like to hold it through the gill when it's already dead when I'm just doing dissections on it. Uh, you can also go through the eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the best the best is the mouth. Okay. And, so. and then these are their uh, as I said, their pectoral fins. So this is how they, you know, scoot them into the corner. Scoot their prey in. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so, so you caught this fish this morning? Yes, we did. And uh, you don't want to be handling those spines today, but, but how long does this venom last? That is, I don't think that's really known. Um, I've pricked myself quite a few times uh, doing dissections with these. Uh, and I haven't been envenomated, but I think that's just luck because you can still be envenomated after they are dead. But for how long? Uh, I do not. I don't know. Nobody wants to test it. I'm sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we're gonna do questions at the end. Okay. Fine lionfish crevices, overhangs, uh, artificial structures like wrecks. They love wrecks. You can find them upside down sometimes. Do you, also, they're really good at trying to blend in, so they'll be like sideways. Sometimes they'll be. All under there, well, you just gotta find them. Sometimes they're just hanging out on the bottom, and I've swam over to almost swam over top of them, and like, oh, there's a lionfish. Oops, because you don't really expect them to be there. You're always like, oh, they're gonna be in crevices, but sometimes they're out swimming. Lionfish, two lionfish. You can see both of them. Safe handling of the fish. Always be careful. As I said, there's the uh, the the five underneath that people forget about, and that's when you can cause problems there. Wear gloves. Cut the spines off. Uh, if if you're any worried at all about the envenomation, cut the spines off. You can do that with scissors, you know, with a knife or um, like shears. We have shears at the park when we cut them off. There you go. Remove the dorsal spines. Then don't forget the pelvic and anal spines, and then you can flay them. <laughs> and and you have no, the only thing that you have to worry about after that is just face right here. Um, uh, uh, it gets it's hard and spiky. They're not venomous there. It's just hard, and you can scrape your hand on it. So, right, so what happens if you get stung by a lionfish? <laughs> So it can cause swelling, as you can see. Um, it does, it can be extremely painful. It, sometimes uh, swelling happens, redness, bleeding, paralysis, convulsions, or disorientation. What's paralysis? Uh, you're frozen. Oh. So, uh, yeah. so seek medical attention if you need. Like I said, it can be, the spectrum of how you're envenomated is very wide. Like mine was very, very mild. And one, my internship buddy's part, like his hand looked like that. Wow. So it just, it varies. Um, you can also call the Aquatic to the Toxics Hotline. They'll be there to answer any questions uh, immediately for you. All right, so what can you guys do about lionfish? Oh, report any that you see. If you report um, any, especially like in the park, we can go back uh, within a couple of days. Lionfish don't move that much. Um, and the extended period of time they'll be there. So if we can get, if 
you go out like on Monday and you give us the coordinates and we can go up by like Friday, or we can probably get those lionfish and remove them. Um, so go and fish for them. As I said, no catch limit, no size limit, no fishing license. Just bring the right <coughs> gear to get them. <coughs> Eat lionfish. <laughs> Eat them. Lionfish are delicious. They uh, they do taste like they're a white fish, so um, people say that they resemble hogfish. I've only had hogfish once, and I, but I had lionfish before, so they taste pretty similar. Um, delicious. You can you can make anything out of them. Uh, also, discourage any ca capture of I mean release of captured lionfish. We don't want to uh, put them back in the population. As I said, they can reproduce very quickly, and one female, two million eggs per year. Lionfish derbies. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. So Reef sponsors a lot of lionfish derbies. So thus far, they've removed 18,560 lionfish uh, from all their derbies. And just past July, they had one in Fort Lauderdale where they removed 1,250 lionfish in just one day. So, wow. So you get teams, you go out, you catch as many lionfish as you can, and then a lot of times you get prizes for top whatever they decide the top things are. Okay, so you can't beat it, eat it. That's a slogan from, from Bermuda. So they're trying to get people to eat fish, uh, get the lionfish. And anyways, tasty, but venomous, not poisonous. So does anybody know the difference? Okay, so the main difference is they both have toxins. So, but it's how you get the toxins is the difference. So ven venomous, like the lionfish, you have to be injected by their spines, and that's how you get the toxins. But once those spines are gone, the fish is edible. There's no more toxins. Now, poisonous, the entire fish has the toxins in their body, so if you consume it, then you get the toxins. So, yeah. Uh, so, yes. Tell your local restaurants that you want them to serve lionfish. Uh, there's 19 already in Florida. Reef.org has uh, them all listed. And there's also some in other states. I don't know them off the top of my head. Uh, but you can also find recipes online. There's also a book, Reef Made. It's a cookbook. So it also talks about the invasion and like all the, the biological stuff of lionfish and how to cut them and flay them and clean them and all nice. Yes. <laughs> uh, you guys can feel free to come take this out after. Do they, do they buy fishing lines? No, they do not. They don't. You have to actually go down and dive and get them. Fortunately, that's the only way so far to get them. These are some recipes. Don't they look delicious? Yes. Um, the ones in the middle are actually the, the spines that people made into toothpicks. So, there you go. My personal favorite is the tacos. I just love tacos and lime fish tacos. Ceviche is also really good. So if you want to report a lionfish, you can contact my boss by any of these means, uh, the call in her office or emailing her. You can also call or email Noah. There's also a couple websites here, lionfish.eisf.org or reef.org slash lionfish. Also, if you Google this stuff, you can probably find the site. And then further information, Biscayne has their own website, so check that out. There, there's a whole bunch of things that there. We also have a Facebook page. There's also an Instagram for people that want to check out pictures of the park and stuff. And if you guys have any uh, questions regarding lionfish or this presentation or anything, really, uh, you can email me as well. And if anybody wants all, any of this stuff, come talk to me after. That's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> So also, um, she was planning on dissecting that lionfish, if anybody wants to stay and see what's in its stomach. Um, but first, we'll, uh, uh, she'll take some questions. Lionfish is a female and a male. That's the only way they can reproduce. Yeah, so what they do is they spawn. So the 
The females release their eggs, and the, and the males release the, the sperm, and then they mix together and do whatever they I don't know. They don't cross breed. I know that some species that can be sure they just start cross breeds me. They have to stay in the species. Well, for lionfish here, there's actually two distinct species, uh, but they're physically they look the same, but they are genetically different. So maybe if we do more genetic tests, we might be might be seeing crossing over there, but I. I don't know. They can't crossbreed with local so. reef fish, yeah. though. They're too different. Yeah. Yeah. People have them as pets, yeah. but you can't buy one in Florida anymore. They they stopped they stopped bringing them in. Okay.